Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a Yanagasawa metal soprano saxophone mouthpiece. This is a nine. I bought this new probably 10 to 11 years ago, and it does, in fact, come with a ligature. For this, I'm going to use my curved soprano sax neck. Like, no music stores are open now, so if I damage my other neck... I won't be able to get it repaired. This is going to affect the sound a little bit, just in terms of the direction of how the bell is pointing, but you'll get the general idea of what the mouthpiece sounds like. I think I paid right around the $200, maybe like a 180 to $200 for this 10 to 12 years ago. This is a really good, nice, warm sounding mouthpiece. I prefer brighter, hard rubber and plastic mouthpieces on soprano because they cut through a lot easier. However, when doing more studio type of recordings, I really like the warmth that I can get from something like this. It is pretty resistant, especially with this being a nine, this being more open like this, but let's take a look at some of the specs. Again, this is a pretty old mouthpiece that I have here. So the table is pretty flat here. We have these relatively thick side rails pretty thin the tip rail there the inside walls are flat take a look at this inner chin area here you can see how thick that is i was surprised by that but then it makes sense considering the kind of resistance and warmth that you get from a mouthpiece like this this bore size so this shank here the inner part of the shank i call that the bore or the leg this is actually pretty small, and I feel like across soprano saxophone mouthpieces, there doesn't really seem to be a type of standardization. This one fits really tight on this neck, so I have to push this thing in pretty far on my particular soprano in order for it to play in tune. Let's take a look at this baffle here. You can see there's a little tiny bit of a forehead that's here how it changes the angle as we move in a little further. You can see how that's reflecting the light. Almost like a little duck bill that's there. Let's take a look at the inside from this angle. And from the back, see that square. This is the mouthpiece protector that I use for this. It's the same as the regular ones, but I had to cut it because this is a small size here. Fifty four point two ish grams. OK, so measuring this thing out, we're looking at right around seventy one millimeters. OK, this is nice to take into account uh, just so you can know how it's going to fit on the neck of your soprano. OK, let's take a look at this facing curve here. See if we can get an idea of what that looks like. Let's take a look at this tooth here. And you have your Yanagisawa insignia here that is stamped and pressed into the metal there. I'm going to use this curved soprano neck and this can definitely have an effect on intonation. I've really had to push this mouthpiece pretty far down on the neck here. So it's good to actually understand what the mouthpiece length is. So also because of this curved neck, I find it actually capable of using a neck strap. Usually with a straight neck, I don't use a neck strap, but with a curve, a curved neck, then sometimes I will use the uh, the neck strap. Okay, let's play a little bit.
one of the other things that can greatly affect the sound from having a curved neck is literally just the angle by which the bell is being pointed. This can have a huge effect. I want to try to play this in as many different configurations so that way you guys can just lump it all together and get a good idea of what this mouthpiece can do. So I'm going to play this sitting down. I'm going to stand up and make sure that the bell has a closer proximity to the microphone. We're going to play it with some songs and uh, you guys will get a general idea of what's going on with this thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so as a follow-up, this mouthpiece is fantastic, but it is considerably different from my Cannonball and my Yamaha, and I was actually having some intonation issues in some certain places. It's definitely not the mouthpiece, it's just me getting familiar with it. I actually did some better takes where those intonation issues aren't there, but I decided to go with these instead, because this is just a more accurate representation of what you could get switching over at first to a mouthpiece like this, but don't get discouraged. By the way, I don't work for Yanagasau. I'm not a paid endorsee or anything, so I don't really care if you buy this thing or not. I don't get a kickback or anything like that, but it is a fantastic mouthpiece. Now, I've seen this on Woodwind Brasswind for $197, and I've seen it on Musician's Friend for $274. So, I don't know what's going on with that. They're basically all guitar center type stores. So I don't know what this thing is going for. And I think I paid around $200 for it back in the day. Maybe it was less than that. I can't really remember, but.
I'm also working on a video for people that are older that want to get started with playing the saxophone. I'm going to start doing that one pretty soon. That's going to be a good one. And believe me, you pick the right instrument to start at an older age. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. Stay tuned. See ya.